And welcome to episode two, everyone. I'm your host, Get Good Fox. This is Ultra Cash, where we are going to start over, and so you can see kind of like building things up from the beginning. Now, we are going to be playing on Lethal Zone, of course, and we're going to play on uh, Mare Valley, because on Ultra Cash, ideally, the base you would want is Whitney Field. Obviously, it'll work on any base, but like, I'm going to go for kind of like the ideal setup. Okay, so for boons, I'm, I can pick anything but favors. Why? Because I don't want to start with any money because that kind of gives us too much of a jump start. It also kind of like defeats the um, the demonstration purposes because uh, in the beginning, like Ultra Cash is a snowballing strategy, meaning it has a, the start is pretty similar to many other starts, but it begins to spiral out of control. Like that's what makes it really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and take Klebka. Also, I have equipped everybody, um, I basically de-equipped people back down to standard stuff. She still has my coffee can mace. I didn't untrain them either, because, like, that's not possible. But, um, and also I wasn't going to go through the effort of, like, re-recruiting everybody a second time. Uh, let's just go with... Catherine? Once again, as you can see, pretty ordinary equipment. And, um, Gage? Sure. And he has our Bowie machete. Okay, so these are going to be our first starting three, and our goal will be to eventually obtain the other members and basically build out a build a fill out a base. Let's get in there. And here we are. Let's go ahead and skip. And now, normally, what I would do is uh, if I had the 4,000 influence, what I would do is immediately call on a vehicle, which, because we don't start with the 4,000 influence and our characters do not start with tough negotiation, that is presently not an, not an option. So we're just going to head on over, though. Uh, the only thing we have to be worried about is potentially getting ambushed by a... exactly that, a feral. Now, because the game, you know, the game isn't afraid to troll you a little bit, get you that feral along the way, what we can do is just go the long way. I should probably take a break before so I... So always, always try to use your ears, and um, I would say encountering a feral... We have unfriendly company nearby. Oh, do I not? Oh, I wasn't playing who I thought I was. I thought I was playing as Lebka. Um, the odds of it, I think... I don't encounter the feral that frequently along the way to the base, I will say, but I would say it's better to assume that it will, that you will get a feral, rather than assume you won't get a feral. I would say that's probably a good idea. But you know, what can you do? This, this is what you can do. We are just going to avoid the combat with them. It takes us a little longer to get to the base, but meh. Also, oh, that's right, I have no money. I'm used to having money. All we gotta do is knock some of these fools out and make our way home. A more roundabout path, but that's lethal zone for you. So our first goal is to get home in one piece and avoid the feral. Now, because the feral did spawn over there, it means I'm not too worried about seeing ferals elsewhere. In the beginning of the game, I typically anticipate seeing one feral every 30 minutes in the very beginning of the game. Good. We've got triple screamers over there. This could get a little messy, so we may want to try to take this base a little quieter. And by that I mean we're going to try to open, we're going to try to get in from a different direction. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but this place could make a nice home. If we could take the base without incident, it won't be too big a deal. First one toast. <laughs> A 
Looks like we are gonna have to deal with the screamers. There's four of them, jeez. I still feel like the feral is too far away, which is why I'm not too upset about it. Like, to me, it doesn't seem like it's going to be, like, a really big, um... It, it's an inconvenience, but... The feral what we encountered was pretty close to the beginning of the, um... It was pretty close to the vehicle in the beginning. The three of us being here is going to be sufficient to just over... Basically, we're going to zombie the zombies down, essentially. Use our, like, triple numbers here. Bit of a more action-packed intro. I would say that's because we did start with some standing. And yes, this is Lethal Zone, for anyone wondering. Let's go ahead and reveal the base. The brainless are gone, so it's time for us to claim this place and move in. And oh, in we go. I like that idea. As I said, a little bit of a detour, but not too bad. Now we're gonna go ahead and start playing as this character, because I don't know, why not? I don't see the harm in it. Gimme. Enjoy your water and power, everyone. So step one is uh, we need to get some wheels. Even if it's just a temporary wheels, we still need some wheels. And one of the ways we can do that, we could use the blood mobile. Uh, we can also go for the uh, the prepper's vehicle. But I think what I mainly want to do is save up for. I mainly want to save up for the. Um, the Impaler. So, right now, what are we getting from Ultra Cash? The most important thing we're getting right now is check out our morale. Even though we're in the very, very beginning of um, our morale issues, like we are, we are getting some benefit from uh, defeated the Blood Plague. But even if we didn't have that, like we would be maybe a little bit slightly negative without that. Like this right here is definitely not the uh, the end all be all because it's actually this it's cuisine times six it's cuisine it's cuisine six three times like that's actually giving us a humongous amount of morale and even because the um defeating the blood plague is giving us 30 morale which is you know it's still a thing it's still like it's not, it's not insubstantial but at the same time like what's really really giving us the morale is like um because what what's six times Three is what eighteen, and then eighteen times three is like fifty-four. So basically, the fact that we have um, the three Ultra Cash members with cuisine that is already giving us double. It's already overcoming the lethal zone penalty. So it's like it's helping like out there? a ton. That's great. We also are still getting basically a fifty percent um, uh, influence bonus because the. The three cuisine characters combined are about 45% more influence, which means it's just it's only going to help us get to our objective of getting the impaler as quickly as as quickly as we can. That's really our main goal. We want to get that impaler. We'd be crazy to pass up the chance to make that place an outpost. Okay, so since we know there's a feral there, I'm kind of hoping that we can find another car. Uh, this utility truck doesn't say it's destroyed, meaning it just needs to be refueled. Actually, let me go ahead and loot these. In the beginning, we do want to grab some stuff, especially so we can sell. Like, basically, our first goal is to earn about 3,000 influence. and uh, We have a few goals. One, Boring. we want to level our guys up so that they can get into tough negotiation and become an, a complete Ultra Cash member. And then the other thing we want to do is get into the uh, the big DLC items. That is our initial objective. So let's grab whatever we can. A Molotov is useful in the beginning of the game. 
if I have to escape the Pharaoh, for example, I can just easily use that to burn him and get some distance on him. Yeah, that's great. Done and done. Too easy. So once we do this, it should allow us to activate our first quest, which pays out a good amount of money. And if we can complete it, it will be enough to give us the Impaler. And once we have the Impaler, that's our ticket to farming uh, standing. This is going to come in handy. Oh, nice. Cheap beer. Luxury items are always good. The main thing we need right now, though, is a set of wheels. So after I deliver this back, because I don't have the rucksack, I can only carry one at a time right now. Uh, after I get a set of wheels, what we're going to work on is uh, getting that, probably that utility truck up and running. Why the utility truck, you might ask? Um, what the utility truck? Actually, maybe I should just summon the the blood uh, mobile. You know, I won't summon the blood mobile because you you might not have access to the blood mobile at the time. Because the blood mobile is a limited time thing. Uh, what can I build? Uh, let me get this torn down and I guess we'll build a... A gym. That's going to be the first thing I want is a gym. Uh, you might be surprised that the first thing I want is a gym. Uh, it's a very simple reason is that um, the gym is... Oh, I got a computer's textbook. Where did I get that? Oh, sweet. They're right there. Okay, so that means I have a, uh, an ally to fall back to. So, like, we do have some... We'll have some morale issues due to... Um, being out of that, but I, I don't really care, to be honest. Like, we can we can counteract our morale problems, like, just through brute force. And eventually, we'll, we'll pick up, like, a little bit of resources, and that will fix it. Okay, so what we want to do next is... Get that car up and running. And I, uh, a little up ahead, there is a few things we need. There's a, uh, a gasoline tank. A gasoline storage. That's where we're going to get our fuel. And then we can use that to get the, um... Ugh. Smells like blood. That's how we're going to get our, our truck up and running. Better watch out for plague zombies. And like I said, our allies are right there. So if we need help, we can always run to them. No sets around, but we can't secure the place with a plague heart close by. Then what we can do with the vehicle is we can use the vehicle to reverse into some zombies to collect the plague samples necessary to do that first objective. And that's going to get the ball rolling. So we got this. So notice that the beginning was a little rough, like uh, trying to get to the house, you know, clearing the house and whatnot. But now it's gotten fairly peaceful. And that's because in the beginning of the game, even if the, even if the game is a little bit out to get me, uh, there's only so far it can go. It, it can only try to get me for so long because the game itself is currently not, um, it's currently not designed for a maximum level of difficulty yet. I don't really need to kill too many zombies simply on the fact that um, uh, you need to kill a lot of plague zombies to get the samples. So we'll agree to find the samples. Can I trade? Yes. Um, even though they're not a friend, I just want to get rid of like... I'm not going to get rid of anything. Alright, so we know this is here. The utility truck. Let's just go for the utility truck. This won't be easy. Bring your best gear, okay? Helping out like this is a good way to make friends. So the fighting gym is done. Uh, you might wonder why the fighting gym first. Well, the answer is that I don't want to repair any of my weapons. That's not one of my objectives. I don't. I don't care about repairing weapons. So that's the first reason why. The second reason, so that that's why I don't care about the workshop because right now I'm just if my weapons break down, I'll just use a different weapon. I don't need to build anything from the workshop. That's why I don't have that. And then the third reason is, although the infirmary has some value, um, I need it to be level two. Like before it can really help me, it has to be level two. The only weakness we have right now is if I get the blood plague. I'll, I'll be in trouble if I get the blood plague. So that's kind of the gamble I'm taking. 
But at the same time, um, if I got the blood plague right now, I don't have the samples for it anyway, so. Now, what if this also has a repair kit in it? It Almost doesn't. Out. Too bad. A refuel? Perfect. Now what we can do is loot these. To, since we're right here, this is an area where there is a larger number of um, material rucksacks than normal, so I want to go ahead and use those. Looks like we got ourselves a screamer who wants to be a pain. Kick to interrupt them, and then we can just beat his butt. Basically, while we're here, we might as well get ourselves possibly four rucksacks of building materials. That'll be 20 materials right there, and that'll be enough to resolve both our morale and, you know, set up our basic objects. Already. I don't want to be in heavy carry, because right now I do care about my stamina at least a little bit. In it goes, in it goes. Uh, that sells for 85 influence, so I'm definitely happy to see one of those. Once we get the Impaler, things are going to be a lot easier. Uh, then we'll actually be able to stabilize our loot in the beginning. Another luxury item, that's excellent. Let's see if we can get that other rucksack. That would be awesome. There it is. Might as well clear the rest of the loot out of this building, though. I don't see the harm in that. Oh, but I didn't explain why I actually want the gym. I want the gym because the gym gives me more health, and the gym allows me to learn um, my fighting skills quicker. And that's what I really care about. In the What I care about in the beginning of the game is just having more health. Why do I care about more health? Well... You know, if you make a mistake, you want to have as much health as you can get. It's very, uh, very handy in the beginning of the game to have, like, extra amounts of health. Now, you shouldn't rely on it. Uh, Lethal Zone is a high enough level of difficulty that... Uh, unless you have, like, an insane amount of health... And even if you do have an insane amount of health, you'll probably get absolutely hammered and owned. So it's, it's just not a good idea to take a lot of damage. But, you know, like, unless you're just, like, absolutely perfect 100% of the time, like, all the time, you're going to make a mistake eventually. And it's better to have more health than less health in the event you make a mistake. And as I said, unless you're just, like, super omega tier perfect, you're going to make a mistake. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay, it looks like we didn't make too much of a commotion, which is good. I was a little worried one of them would scream, but it looks like they chose to fight instead. Foolish idea from the zombie's perspective. And then we should be able to get our other two rucksacks out of this building. And we get another. That's fairly generous. Not fairly, that's very generous. They're going to give us not one, but two mods. And we don't need either of them, so that's like 85 influence each. Kind of like, you know, like um, getting a little bit of that question mark over my head in, in real life. I'm like, hmm, what are, you, what, what, what are you trying to do here, game? Okay, let's go load up the vehicle. Even if I leave a little bit of loot behind, that's not a big deal. Right now, my goal is to get our base up and running. As you can see, even without the stealth skill, we're able to get uh, we're, we're able to get the important work done. And that's another reason why I don't really pick stealth. I mean, I may have one, sometimes two characters with stealth, and I typically combo it with, um, say, something like. 
backpacking. Why that? Because I use stealth as a looting skill in order to like, oh, here's our first sample. No place to put I that. want that. Um, I will drop this note. Doesn't see me. Oh. Speak of the devil. While certainly the stealth skill does provide you with a greater amount of stealth, I mean, another thing that gives me stealth is the fact that I've got scouting on. With scouting, I'm able to see the enemies, and therefore I can move faster than stealth by simply being able to sprint around and be basically having the knowledge of where the enemies are allows me to like move faster when I don't when I need to like if I had stealth I wouldn't know right now if I could sprint around or not I could probably assume that I can but I wouldn't really know for sure and that's why um the way I feel about stealth is, I feel stealth is the kind of skill that it's very good for beginner players, and it's very good for intermediate players, but when you become an advanced player, uh, you begin to outgrow the skill. That's basically the thing, that's the way I would describe it. It's a skill that, like, it's, it has its uses for sure, but it's also a skill that you tend to outgrow. So let's get this feral out of here. And the way we're going to do that is by driving slowly, catch him onto the back, and then speed up. And that is how you can squish a feral even without a um, impaler. And as you saw, that gave us tough negotiation as well, meaning I can now swap characters. And now we're actually going to start making some money. Uh, let's just throw all of this in. Yeah, look at us go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and get this going. And with our remaining labor, we'll get that out of here. And uh, this can go in. These are going to get sold, so let's leave them in there. And we don't have any guns, so let's just swap on over to... I don't know. Uh, how much do you got? Not a whole lot. What about you? Uh, you're hurt a little more, so let's go ahead and play as Hlebka. Um, we need this. Oh, I'm finished. Nice to hear it. We just need two. All we need to do this are we need two samples. So now what we can do. And we can't sell anything until we get the, um, we, we, we want to get them to friendly, because we want to get full price. So all I got to do now is find some plague zombies, I just need to, like, back into them and run them over real quick. All we need is one sample. I mean, technically we need seven, because it would be nice to have enough samples to also create a plague cure, but, you know, one thing at a time. So here we got some plague zombies, let's just reverse into some of them and see if we can get ourselves a a sample um samples are somewhat uncommon on lethal zone which is uh i guess compensated by the sheer quantity of the zombies but you know you, you might need to run a few of them over that's all i'm saying you might need to run a few of them over we got a bunch of them right here. We'll we'll probably get it from these guys. This is a solid number of them. Come on, give me the goods. I need your like pulsing red glowing bits. I'd require them for for science or something. Okay, they are circling around a little too much. There we go. Are you guys not going to drop me one? There we go. Like I said. I'll I give it up. Sometimes you just have to... Um, sometimes they just require a bit of encouragement. I'm exhausted. I need to rest. Okay, so now we have two. Let's go turn it in. Now, this quest usually gives out 500 influence. And we're not even... We are up to Ultra Cash 1 right now because only one of our characters has is fully developed into the tough negotiation combo. 
So even though we have three character members, it's only Ultra Cash 1. So let's see how much we're going to get out of this. Normally this would pay 500, which is already a pretty handsome price. But we do have some solid we do have some solid bonuses right here. There you go. Eight hundred and seventy-five for Ultra Cash level one. Very nice. So that means we can immediately go ahead and just take the ultimate vehicle delivery. Also, it means we can unload this stuff, and we're just going to sell all this off. Hey there, stranger. So within the first episode, we are already making some power plays. In fact, we almost have enough influence to call in the, what do you call it, the Impaler. Or not the Impaler, the uh, the Pyro Launcher. And now, yeah, of course, I could immediately, if I had, what do you call it, favors, and I started with the extra money, I could do it immediately. Now what we can do is start doing some other things, though. So what we need now are some allies. And we're going to go ahead and start taking some of these, um... We're just going to take some of these outposts in order to start dealing with our initial food issues. The area is secure and the outpost is up. And once again, that's because, like, you know, our money will bounce back. Even without the full Ultra Cash combo, our money is always going to have a tendency to bounce back. The other thing is we definitely want more allies because we need people to trade with and we need more quests to pop up. I think I'm done searching here. Mind your own business. Clear the trash complete. Let's go ahead and get all of our base fixed up as well. Uh, oh yeah, we still need... Um, what are we up to? We got a 343 influence. We're gonna need a little more in order to really get things going, but it's, uh, it's a great start now that we have the Impaler. Hey, hon. You're welcome to come in. Let's go ahead and sell this crap we found. Big old zombie jamboree is not our problem, so we are going to go out of here. And what we want to get is um, probably... Let's go over here and grab these guns. We're going to become gun grabbers, right? You know, that'd be an awesome enclave name. You know how they have different enclave names? What about the gun grabbers? Maybe that is a name and I just don't remember. Or I've never seen it before. Who knows? Infirmary is up, which means I can then get the workshop in. We either find more ammo or we start practicing with slingshots. Yeah, definitely not. You're next. So we should be able to find a, um, a rucksack here, as well as some very basic guns. Uh, although I typically do not bother to defend my base, I like to have it just just in the event that I am pushed into defending my base. I do like to have my characters equipped. I don't assume, just because I, I it's true that I am very confident in my ability to play Lethal Zone. I, even without the Pyro Launcher, as you can see, we don't have that, but like... Um, one of the things that's a good idea is to not... It, it, is to not take unnecessary risks. And that's what I, that's exactly what I plan on doing, is avoiding unnecessary risks. Got ourselves a zombie that needs to go. I'm guessing it's on the roof. Yep, I see it now.
Now the nice thing about Ultra Cash is, regardless of the way that you plan to play the game, whether you like to do quests, or if you like to kill zombies, Ultra Cash is going to make all of it just pay more. So you can keep playing the same way, but now you actually get, like, compensated, essentially, for what you're doing. So our new ally is a little down the road. I was hoping they'd be a little closer by, but no such luck there. Nothing up here. Sometimes that's a knick-knack location. Let me check some of the backs of these vehicles. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Let's go ahead and drop off this ammo. And we will have kind of the basic supplies that we need. We're going to need a little more food, but that's fine. We've already knocked our food consumption down to four per day instead of six. And that's totally fine. Throw that in, throw these in, and that in, of course. Um, I'm gonna hang on to that, because we can sell that real quick. Um, there should be, yeah, let's hit this up. Apparently we need a little more food. Our food is still in the, uh, the yellow. Not a problem, though. Oh, God. Knocked off course. All we gotta do is loot this location, and we should be good. There's a group of arms dealers nearby. The prices are high, but the selection is huge. Maybe we should check it out. Really? An undefended location? For us. Weapons for All is a really good quest because, um... All you gotta do is just say, all you gotta do is shake your fist angrily at them, and if you do that, you just get like a free 200 influence, but we're gonna be able to multiply it with Ultra Cash, so that's basically just gonna be a free quest for us. Probably won't have time for it in this episode, though. For me? There we go, there's the food ruck. And some ethanol, we do need that for building upgrades. And this should get all of our resources into the white. And out of the yellow. So even with the game attempting to have like a, you know, a little bit of a messier start, Ultra Cash is just knocking it out of the park. And even, like I said, even if we didn't have uh, some of the upgrades I've got, even if we didn't have like Blood Plague Survivor, etc. Oh, here's an opportunity to get a little bit of standing. Perfect. How close are we? Getting there. We gotta get that, look at that, we're already up to 17 influence of Feral, up from the original 10, so it's quickly stacking up, which is nice. We're gonna be killing a lot of Ferals in order to farm our influence to get into our hero status. But there you go, so this will be our playthrough for Ultra Cash. We'll be continuing on until we max out the base, and uh, or max out Whitney Field, rather. And um, yeah, once we're done, we will then return back to Hyper Community as intended, and after that, who knows, we'll do some more stuff. Anyways. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Once again, remember to watch Ultra Cash. Share it with your friends, like anyone who plays uh, State of Decay. This is a new way to play the game. That's one of the really big deals, is that Ultra Cash gives you a new way to play State of Decay 2. Uh, people have been looking for kind of, oh, I'm bored, what do I do? Ultra Cash gives you a new way to play State of Decay 2. So if any of your friends are kind of like, oh man, I'm like, you know, I've been playing State of Decay, I'm a little out of it, show them the Ultra Cash video. That might get them back into it because it is a totally new way to play State of Decay that isn't a painful, like, you know, like, play State of Decay without a car, using like a knife. You know, like, it, it's a way that's fun, not a way that like su super sucks. But yes, anyways. Like the video if it was entertaining. Subscribe for future State Decay 2 Ultra Cash content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.